and Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Ruchach Kodash. want to give double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone. Peace and blessings, Shalom, unto the hopefully lick and the rest of the one-third who's set to get out of here from the destruction that's soon to come. And uh, I want to go into some history today, man. Uh, just something I've been uh, meditating on through the spirit, man, over uh, last week. And um, it's pretty much, it might be a start to a, a series, man, which I want to entitle uh, uh, Biblical History Leads to uh, Biblical Prophecy. Because when you go into the history of the scriptures, uh, you start to notice a lot of times that certain things that happen in history uh, uh, connects to things that may be tied into a uh, uh, prophecy or it just might be tied to future events that's going to happen uh, in the scriptures. It might not have been specifically prophesied, but uh, say um, the story of Joseph, man, you look how the Most High set it up to where it started off with something negative uh, as far as his brethren, uh, all right, the other sons uh, so, uh, uh, setting him up. Uh, with Ishmael, and Ishmael settling them unto the Egyptians in, in the captivity, but that led to Israel being uh, receiving salvation once Joseph was established in Egypt under Pharaoh, all right, during the time of the famine, okay? So instances like that, you realize when you go into the history that a lot of things in the history happen specifically, and you always keep in mind the Most High set up everything the way he wanted it for a reason, man, okay? So uh, I want to go into uh, 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 a little bit of history of, of Israel and Amalek, man, okay? And specifically uh, seeing how King Saul, by him rebelling against the Most High and not doing exactly what the Most High told him to do and, uh, and cutting off all the Amalek, now look at the position that Amalek, uh, the Amalekites are in today, all right? Showing you that, okay, he, had, he rebelled. But the Most High set it up that way because he had a specific role for the Amalekites to uh, 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 to play in the earth today. All right, so uh, Lord willing, there'll be some edification from this video. And uh, I want to start off with um, Genesis chapter 36 and verse 9. It says, And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites, in Mount Seir. These are the names of Esau's sons, Eliaphus, the son of Adah, the wife of Esau, uh, Ruel, the son of uh, Bish, uh, Bashamoth, the wife of Esau, and the sons of Eliaphus were Teman, uh, Omar, Zopha, Zopho, Zepho, and uh, uh, Gatam, and, uh, and Kinez. And Timnah was concubine to Eliphaz, Esau's son, and she bare to Esau uh, Salakia, and she bare to Eliphaz Amalek. These were the sons of Adah, Esau's wife. So I just want to grab that real quick to show uh, um, the birth of Amalek, man. All right. The beginning of the line of the Amalekites, man, because they played a uh, uh, key roles in our history all right as well as they play a key role in the earth today man because look what they're doing today all right and i'm, I'm gonna get to that uh, further in the scriptures man but just keep that in mind that the malachites who are the, uh, the, uh, these gutter rats man these so-called uh, jews they 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 have control of the earth right now and, uh, and are causing major things dealing with the prophecy of the scriptures man major prophecies dealing with the scriptures man in the times that we living in okay but uh I'm grab another preset man just going into the history in between israel and amalek man but this is uh exodus chapter 17 and verse 7 it says and he called the name of the place Masah and meribah because of the chiding of the children of israel because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Then came Amalek and fought with Israel in Rephidim. And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out men and go out and go out, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of Yahweh in mine hand. So Joseph did as Moses had said unto him and fought with Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur 
went up to the top of the hill, and it came to pass when Moses held up his hand that Israel prevailed, and when he went and when he let down his hand, Amalek prevailed. All right, just going into a little bit of history, man, because uh, that was, Amalek was one of the first ones that uh, uh, were really the first ones that came up against us when we came out of the land of Egypt, man. And you go into the account like they they attacked us when we was weary, man, coming in uh, uh, coming out of Egypt, man. All right. Okay, it says, uh, but Moses, verse twelve. But Moses' hands were heavy, and they took up, uh, and they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat there on. And Aaron and her stayed up his hands, the one on the one side and the other on the other side, and his hands were steady until they, until the going down of the sun. And Joshua comforted, discomforted Amalek and his people with the edge of the sword. And the Lord said unto Moses, Write this for a memorial, memorial, memorial in a book, and refer, rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I will utterly put out the remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. All right. So you seeing uh, uh, the way the Most High set this thing up, man? He started off by uh, setting up Amalek to come up against us first when we came out of Egypt, man. Uh, starting a, a, a generational. A generation to generation of uh, feud and war with Amalek, man. Okay, but it says, uh, and Moses built an altar and called, and called the name of it Jehovah uh, Nasi, Nasi, and he, for he said, because the Lord had sworn that the Lord will have war with Amalek from generation to generation. Okay. So you see in the history of, of, of what the Most High was setting up uh, during uh, in, in the ancient times, dealing with Amalek, man. He was setting up a war with them from generation to generation, man. Okay. Real quick, I just want to grab one more precept uh, before I get into the account of Saul when he was supposed to utterly destroy Amalek, man. Okay. And uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 28, Salakia 25. This is Deuteronomy chapter 25 and verse 18. Uh, and I'll start up at verse 16. It says, uh, Deuteronomy 25 and 16, For all that do such things, and all that do unrighteously, are an abomination unto the Lord thy power. Remember what Amalek did unto thee by the way, when ye were come forth out of Egypt, how he met thee by the way, and smote smote the hindmost of thee, even all that were feeble behind thee, when thou was faint and weary, and he feared not Yahweh. Therefore it shall be, when the Lord thy power hath given thee rest from all thine enemies round about, in the land which the Lord thy power give it thee for an inheritance to possess thou, that thou shalt blot out the remembrance of Amalek under heaven. Thou shalt not forget it. So we are not uh, to forget what Amalek did when we came out of Egypt, man. And when is this going to be officially done, man? In the kingdom of heaven after a thousand years of hardcore slavery, that's when we're going to uh, officially blot out uh, the remembrance of Amalek, man. Okay? So going into the account of Saul, uh, of, of Saul and First Samuel, if if Saul would have completely wiped out um, Amalek at that time, then he wouldn't have, uh, they wouldn't be in a position they are in today, man, because he would have took them out of the earth, uh, the earth, man. It wasn't time for that yet, okay? So the most I set Saul up to rebel, and that show you just the why that much more why we are to fear the heavenly Father, man. All right, because he do, this is his show, man. He does whatever he wants to do the way he want to do it, and then he'll punish you for what he created you to do. That's, hey, that's a power to fear, man. All right? But uh, real, this is First Samuel chapter 15 and 1. It says, Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait 
for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and, and utterly destroy all that they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And, and you go into this account, Saul didn't completely do, uh, fulfill that, man. First off, he, bring, he brought back the king, all right, uh, Agag the king, which if you uh, read the complete uh, chapter, you'll see, uh, uh, see everything that he didn't do as far as the commandment that the Heavenly Father gave, man, all right, through the, the prophet Samuel, all right, and I want to get the uh, the punishment, because I just a second ago, I spoke on how the Most High set, set you to do something up uh, against his will, all right, and then he'll punish you for it, man. All right, and that's why we are to fear the heavenly Father, man, and, and constantly pray for His mercy that we stay under His grace and mercy, man. All right, um, and constantly pray the prayer to King David. Uh, pray, man, not to uh, 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 for him to take His Holy Spirit away from us, man, which is the spirit of understanding, man. Okay, but uh, real quick, just uh, get straight to the point. This is uh, First Samuel. Chapter 28 and verse 18, it says, Because thou obeyed, obeyedest not the voice of the Lord, nor executest his, wrath, his fierce wrath upon Amalek, therefore hath the Lord done this thing unto thee this day. Moreover, the Lord will also deliver Israel with thee into the hand of the Philistines, and tomorrow shalt thou and thy sons be with me so that was the judgment man for him not doing what uh, the most i uh, told him to do he delivered uh israel and his uh uh, uh king saul and his sons uh, uh to death man all right in in the midst of battle okay but it says uh the lord shall the lord also shall deliver the host of israel into the hand of the philistines then saul fell straightway all along on the earth and was sore afraid because of the words of Samuel, and there was no strength in him, for he had eaten no bread all the day, nor all the night. And I'm not going to finish uh, this chapter out, man, but that's exactly what the Most High did, man. What you read in verse 19, he delivered the host of Israel into the hand, which consisted of the armies, and of uh, King Saul and his sons uh, uh, into the hands of the Philistines, man. All right, as punishment for not keeping, uh, 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 following the words that the Heavenly Father uh, told him to do as far as utterly destroying all the Amalek, man. All right, and from uh, man all the way down to the very oxen. Okay, but now you get into the, uh, uh, jump forward and you see that by, most I set that up for a reason, so Amalek will be able to fulfill uh, the, the role that they play in the earth today, man. Okay, and now he's taking them and put them on, on top, man. Okay, real quick, uh, precept. This is um, Daniel chapter 4 and 17. It says, This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men. All right, and man. I didn't read the scripture so many times, man, but just going into this particular topic and then reading it right now to show you how the most high, man, that's why you can never do enough studying. Not saying you're supposed to kill yourself and overload on studying, but like you got these guys who just get into this knowledge for a certain amount of time and then they think they get it, man. You constantly go into these scriptures and gain understanding, man, and that's a beautiful blessing in itself, man. All right, but when it says the most I rule within the kingdom of men and you start just kind of meditating and thinking about all the different things and the ways the most High set it up for all these rulers to come into place and then be taken out, man, all the way up to the very time that we're in to where now uh, uh, these gutter rats are ruling the earth. But the most High's getting ready to take them down and further fulfill prophecy, man. OK. Well, back uh, in Daniel 4 and 17, it says, this, is, this matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High rule it in the kingdom of men and give it to, to whomsoever he will and set it up over it the basis of men. And that's what he's done, man. He set up the basis of men, Esau, Edom, man. And at the head are these Amalekites, man. 
All right. Who's running? Who's running uh, the earth in secrecy? It's it's out now. This devil's being exposed, man. And everybody is against uh uh the uh, the actual the physical state of Israel right now, man. All right. And with America backing them, man. So you see, this this is a, a key role that these devils, all right, the Amalekites are playing in the earth. And if Saul would have completely destroyed them, they wouldn't be in the position they are in today. All right. But uh, we'll grab uh, one last precept before I get the major point of, of what Amalek is doing uh, concerning uh, major prophecy, man. All right, real quick. This is uh, the book of Psalm, uh, Psalm 64 and 1. It says, Hear my voice, O Yahweh, and my prayer. Preserve my life from, um, from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity who wet their tongue like swords and bend their bows to shoot their arrows even bitter words that they may shoot in secret at the perfect suddenly do they shoot at him and not fear man as apostle Duhar was going into how do they do that man but they uh, uh shoot at us in secret man the men of the lord the prophets man all right showing you that this is all spiritual man we're constantly We've constantly been at war from the ancient times up until this day with Amalek, man. And we, how do they shoot at us in secret now? By setting up uh, different people to come up against us, man. All right? Setting up all these sellouts. Setting up all these agents and shit. Trying to stop this wor uh, wor uh, word, man. All right? Because we're not on the battlefield anymore, man. We're fighting the spiritual battle. So now they're setting up all these damn vocab Malones. All right, paying off certain niggas uh, uh, to try to uh, teach false doctrines, different things like that, man. To go up against uh, Yahweh, why Yahweh Shah ultimately, man. Okay. I'm going to grab one more uh, scripture, man, just to show a, a, a key a, a, a key role that they have, uh, are holding in the earth right now. And that would have not been done if they would have been utterly destroyed uh, back in the time of King Saul, man. Okay, um, this is Jeremiah chapter 50 and verse 45. Therefore, hear ye the counsel of the Lord that he had taken against Babylon and his purposes, man, that he had purposed against the land of Chaldeans. Surely the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make their habitation desolate with them, man. All right, so when you go into this scripture, what is it talking about? It's going in to the destruction of Babylon in World War III, man. All right, these these gutter rats, these Malachites, man, the so-called Jews, what are they doing, man? Uh, um, they are bringing everybody to war, gathering all the nations, man, through a, 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 for World War III. The Most High is setting them up to draw out, man, all, uh, and cause all this commotion in the earth and, and set the stage for World War III, man. All right? And that's going to bring the destruction of Babylon uh, forth, man. All right? And the deliverance of, of, of the nation of Israel, man. All right? So now you see the, how, how cold the Most High is to where he set up all these things, man. These perfect equations leading up to a higher purpose that he got set forth, man. Okay? So going to, back into the history just real quick of King Saul not completely uh, destroying uh, uh, Amalek. What happened, man? And ending that line, now they in, they're in a position in the earth, and they causing all this uh, uh uh commotion in the earth, man, through their wickedness, man. All right, and then got America backing them, which is uh the great uh, great Babylon, the great horse spoken of in the scriptures. All right, and causing all the nations to prepare for war, man, and getting ready for World War Three, which is gonna bring in on the destruction that we waiting on, man. On top of them being said, the ones that's uh, really behind the market, they're behind everything, man, concerning wickedness right now, man. They're the ones that's setting the stage for the mark of the beast, man. They're the ones setting up everything that's going to bring the destruction of this place, man. Okay? So, uh, I want to end it on that, man. Lord willing, there was some edification from this video. Uh, once again, giving all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, by Hashem Yahweh Shai, by Hashem Ruchakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Peace and blessings unto the hopefully elect. Shalom.